This happened last week, but I've only just recovered enough to talk about it. Also, for context, I'm a detective with the police, which was on my profile. So I've been single a few months now, and finally decided to give those Tinder-style apps a go. I was recommended Bumble by a colleague, which is essentially just like Tinder, but B-themed. I downloaded the app Thursday, and by Friday, I had a date, so I thought things were going well. First date I arranged for Saturday, at a busy shopping centre. Now, I've been out of the dating game for a while, and we were chatting about movies, so we went to the cinema to see Mortal Engines. I knew the first greeting was always going to be awkward. The whole, hey is that X, you now have one second to decide on kiss on cheek, awkward hug, or lame wave thing. But what happened was none of those things. Instead I get hit with, tell me who you are, I need to verify you. Which, not going to lie, is as romantic a greeting as smearing yourself with Marmite and announcing, let's have a toast for the pretty lady. Anyway, she asks, what's that on the floor? Pointing at a large pile of dust. It's a pile of dust, I tell her, and she makes me double check. Dust confirmed, we move on to the cinema and purchase tickets. The announcer in my brain exclaims, you are now locked in to the date. We got an hour and a half till the movie. So we grab some ice cream, cause that's cute as hell, and head to Starbucks. Grab a table, and she leans close. Zero chill, just deadpan asks me, what's the darkest job you've ever dealt with? Now, I've got some HP Lovecraft dark stories, so I try to give her a PG version of a double murder I had some involvement with. Note, everything I discussed could also be easily read about online. She said, how did he kill them? Was there a lot of blood? Did you see it? Was it like the movies? I love murder stories. Have you seen Making a Murderer? Have you heard about Ex-Murderer? Do you know this one guy once chopped his mum's head off and had sex with the corpse? Isn't that fascinating? Let me remind you, it's as crowded as balls in leather pants in this coffee shop and people are looking over. She also hit me with a few probing questions. Have you ever committed a crime? Have you ever done drugs? Trying to recover some semblance of a date, I joke. <laughs> Only if you count downloading showbox as a crime. Next, it's my turn to ask some questions and throw out the classic, tell me about yourself. I know it's lame, but I panicked. Oh, I've just been released from 18 months locked up in a psych ward in Broadmoor. It was pretty much a DOS, and I got to meet people like Naked Philip. Now, gripped with what I can only describe as the terror that a double D-breasted woman feels in a slasher flick, I decide I have two choices. Number one, run into the crowd and disappear. Or number two, continue the date. What could go wrong in the cinema? It's just two hours of awkward silence. Let's just say I chose poorly. Before we move off though, she asks me to search her chair. I don't really do much except to say, it's fine. But after walking off, she decides my efforts were not good enough and goes back to search it properly. Finally, into the cinema, now 10 minutes after start time. So it's adverts, but most people have sat down. Of course, there are people in our seat. What looks like a family of 14, parts like the Red Sea so we can sit in the seats we paid for but they are somewhat miffed. Suddenly, my date whips out the flashlight on her phone and starts searching the chair. The woman from the family is also some nut bar and starts yelling, my eyes, turn off that light. My date sits down in the darkness for a whole five minutes before deciding that she wants to have a round two of flashlight rodeo. Cue raging Snickers lady, I'm going to knock you out if you don't turn that light off. I'm not about to white knight defend this woman. I'm a goddamn spectator here. The fruit and nut villain is eventually calmed down by her fella. The date goes for lucky number three flashlight gamble. This time I have to step in and say this is not okay. 
So, movie time. I'm sure Mortal Engines is a fine film, but it's pretty out there and long. All I'm thinking about is the three pieces of advice I was given prior to updating. Number one, don't get drunk. Number two, don't send rude pics. Number three, don't stick your junk in crazy. So, despite the horror movie Mortal Engines has become, I'm still a man and she is an attractive woman, so I'm repeating number three again and again in my head like a monk, trying to achieve enlightenment. Lucky the date is so bad and my fear is so palpable that logic wins out. After the movie, she goes to the bathroom and hands me her coat and bag. Oh, can't run yet, got to wait. She returns dead serious. I need you to follow me. This is where I die, I think. I'm being lowered to the bathroom to be filleted like a fish and used as a skin suit in some crazy sex game. She walks me to an isolated area and points to an especially large pile of dust. What's that? I say, just a large pile of dust. Are you sure? Can you check? Sure enough, it's just dust. So keen to make good my escape, I lay down at what was at the time, 8.30. Gotta grab that train. She responds, you know, I'm really thirsty, could really go for a drink. Not willing to be the third party to a human centipede, I push on. Central line, that's me. Oh, you too? Uh, great. Next, she smashes out a, you know, the overground train for me is an hour wait. I don't really want to wait an hour. So thirsty. The next stop, I just decided the wrong station was the right place for me. Oh, look at this, my stop. Well, lovely to meet you, bye. The journey home was the most paranoia-driven thriller of my 29 years. We lived about 25 minutes from each other, so agreed to meet at the beach pier about halfway between. Before meeting, we had been texting and he seemed totally normal. I was already at the pier when he texted me, saying he can't meet me there because his license is revoked and it's too far for him to walk. I should have just left then, but I agreed to meet him at a pizza place closer to him. I get there, and I'm standing outside when I see him, and quickly realise the pics from his profile were at least three to five years old. Homeboy looks like a dollar store version of himself, greasy, looks like he hasn't showered in days, hair undone, holes in his shirt, I awkwardly give him a side hug and suggest we get a seat and he says, oh no, we're not getting pizza. Let's go to the park. I awkwardly say, okay. And as he talks, I realize his gums and tongue ring are stained black from smoking. By this point, I'm completely turned off and I'm just keeping up with formalities. So we get to the park and find a bench to talk. And before I can sit down, Homie pulls me up onto his lap, squeezing me and saying, God, baby girl, you are so cute. I awkwardly scooch away and try to get a conversation going. He pulls out his phone and starts texting for a few minutes, not really listening to me before interrupting with, have you smoked? My friend is a plug. We could go to my place for a bowl. I decline. Ah, oh, come on, baby girl. My place is just right there. We could have some fun too. I decline again. Next thing you know, he pulls me close by his face and whispers, you're so innocent, before broad-tongued licking my face from chin to ear. Shell-shocked, I just sit there for a moment, processing what the hell just happened as he keeps talking about weed before I decide to fake an urgent call and leave. Oh, and by the way, I have self-esteem now and would never put up with anything like this ever again. This was three years ago when I was 19 and dumb as hell. I 
I went on a first date with a girl from Tinder at a Cajun restaurant in Dallas. The restaurant was Razoo's on 75. I had read recently about some stuff called Kratom that's supposed to make you feel really relaxed and euphoric, and I had tried to make a tea from the recommended dosage the previous day, but I didn't feel anything from it. So I figured if this stuff was supposed to make you be cool and euphoric, then the best time to take it would be for a first date. And since I didn't feel anything from it the first time, I figured I should take more. Kratom is usually sold as a greenish, super bitter powder. So I wrapped a lot of it up inside of balls of deli meat and swallowed those whole before the date. I then went to lunch feeling nothing until I met the girl and sat down, at which point I suddenly came to the realization that I was a few seconds away from projectile vomiting up all the kratom and deli meat in the middle of the restaurant. I excused myself, got up from the table, walked a few steps towards the bathroom until I began to violently vomit, at which point I covered my mouth with my hands, began choking as I sprinted towards the bathroom, leaked a trail of vomit all over the floor in a path towards the bathroom, then continued to violently projectile vomit into the trash can in the bathroom. I then spent a while to clean up my face and wash my arms and hands, which was soaked. I discreetly apologized to the waitress on the way back from the bathroom. The waitress wasn't really happy, but didn't call me out on it, so that was good. I then returned to the table and tried to survive the rest of the lunch date without dying of embarrassment. I sat back down with my wet and puffy face. Then I just didn't mention anything about it and pretended like it never happened and awkwardly ignored the elephant in the room until she left. She seemed pretty disturbed, but she didn't directly say anything about it. And she did go on two more dates with me after that, so could have been worse. I felt like a huge asshole and was really embarrassed. So I had been out of the dating game for roughly a year and being the awkward mess that I am, my best friend had convinced me to try out OkCupid. I figured I could get to know people online and then try a date. Terrible idea, I'm still mad at her. So I meet this guy on the site and we spend a few weeks chatting and getting to know each other and he seems really cool. He asked me on a date and I said sure. Here's the part where I'm a moron and I'm surprised I didn't get murdered. I say I prefer low-key dates, so he suggests that he cook us dinner, and we watch indie horror films at his place, and I agree. I am so stupid. I show up at his place, and have developed a code word system through text with my bestie, and she has all the details of where I am. He meets me outside, and I realize I tower over him, at 5'7", that rarely happens to me, but I shrug it off. You can't help your height, right? We go up to his flat, and he shows me around, emphasizing the bedroom. Then he takes me to the kitchen, and shows me four bottles of very expensive wine he bought for me, and no dinner prepared. He pours me a glass, and I awkwardly pet his dog. We sit on the couch, and he puts on this weird Italian art film, no subtitles, all in Italian. Neither of us know what's happening. So I just sit there, feet flat on the ground, spine rod straight, sipping my wine, when he decides to basically curl up on my lap, and he starts nuzzling my face. Like that thing cats do, but with his face on my face, for at least 10 straight minutes, his dog looks at me with pity. At this point, I excuse myself to the bathroom and text my bestie to call me and get me out of there. After taking her call 20 minutes later, I politely try and thank him for the glass of wine and make my way off the couch. And he lays across me and force cuddles me. He wouldn't let me leave. So I just stood up 
and he plummets to the floor. Because, like I said, I'm an Amazonian compared to him. He pops up off the floor to help me put my coat on, and gives me one good sniff right at the nape of my neck. Pretty sure some of my hair is still infused in his brain from how deep an inhale that was. I made no attempt to hide my running down the three flights of stairs and up the block to my car. I deleted my account that night. Never again. This happened just after I decided to get into the dating scene, after a traumatic end to a three-year relationship. So, it's quarter to 1am, and a Tinder match messages me, asking what I'm doing, then invites me to go out with her. I think, it's a bit late, but the clubs are open for three or four more hours, so why not? I should take opportunities, right? I'm a single man in his twenties for the first time. She says she'll pick me up, driving in towards the town from outside of it, and I put on cologne and a nice shirt and get ready to go out. I go to the car and my match is in the front passenger seat and her friend is driving. I think it's pretty weird but having a friend along isn't super off, so I get in and ask which club we're going to. We're not going out-out, just out, my match says as we drive off. Uh, where are we going? I ask, feeling a little uncomfortable. Just into town, she replies. They drive to a nearby bridge with a car park under it, turn the radio up, and start chatting. The girl driving pulls out a one litre bottle of chocolate milk and starts drinking it. They talk about the most boring crap, barely include me in conversation, and start rolling cigarettes. After 15 minutes, they get out of the car to have a smoke, and I get out too. My Tinder match is wearing fluffy white slippers that light up with each step. I turn to face them and say, I appreciate you guys picking me up, but this really isn't my scene. I'm gonna head off, have a nice night. They were very offended. I'll preface this by saying that I made a lot of bad choices in this scenario. It was a rough time in my life where I was very emotionally vulnerable and struggling with drinking and recovering from an abusive relationship, so I didn't handle this situation in the healthiest way. If it were to happen today, I would do things very differently, not that it excuses the guy's behaviour in the least. So, a little over a year ago, I began talking with this guy I matched with on Tinder while he was visiting my city. We didn't get the chance to meet up while he was there, but continued talking for a few weeks until he came back. We texted and talked on the phone, and the chemistry was off the charts. We made plans to meet for drinks upon his return visit to my city. When I got to the bar, he was there with his friend, Okay, not a total deal breaker, but kind of weird. A heads up would have been nice. I introduce myself to the guys and sit next to my date, facing his friend. Something about the vibe is just wrong. His friend seems nice enough, but my date is making me really uneasy. The chemistry we had on the phone just wasn't translating to real life. He didn't seem engaged in the conversation, was giving short answers, and literally swiping through Tinder while sitting next to me. I chalk it up to him not being attracted to me, except he ran his hand up my legs and then tried to grab my chest. I slapped his hand away and said loudly, if you touch me again without my consent, I'm leaving. This immediately sours the mood and makes it awkward as hell between the three of us. He told me to calm down. In retrospect, I definitely should have left then. But I was working on relearning my self-worth and establishing boundaries and struggling a lot with that. I stupidly hoped the situation was salvageable. I don't quite remember how the conversation went from there, 
but somehow we all got back on track, kind of. The friend seemed a lot more personable and frankly safer than my date, so I talked more to him. They wanted to leave, and I suggested a nearby arcade bar, which they agreed to, but we ended up walking to their Airbnb, where they asked me to come upstairs with them. I don't know why I agreed, because literally every fibre of my being was screaming at me not to, but I did. Once I got upstairs, I almost immediately started having a panic attack. The room was spinning, and I had to stick my head out of the window to get fresh air, and I felt like I couldn't breathe. Meanwhile, the guys were laughing and joking. They asked me to come to the kitchen to see something. I didn't feel right about it, and asked what it was, and they said, just come see it. I went to the entrance of the kitchen, but couldn't bring myself to move any closer to them. My date said, come here, we're going to make a video. I grabbed my shoes and ran out of there as fast as I could. As soon as I got a few blocks away, to a populated area, I blocked him on every platform we had connected on. I did report him through Tinder. He told me that he had been reported previously by some girl with a grudge against him, and that if he got reported again, he'd be banned from the app. So I'm pretty sure he was banned after I reported him. And in hindsight, I highly doubt that it was just some girl with a grudge against him for no good reason. I don't know what would have happened had I stayed any longer or entered that kitchen. I don't even want to. Please, 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 if you have a bad feeling about a guy or a situation, be smarter than I was and trust your instincts. They exist to keep you safe. I met a guy and we had decent conversation. He was smart, funny, mutual nerdy hobbies. We decided to meet up at the local gamer bar to play some games while having our first date. So I get in and sit down. Dude has no teeth. He says a hack dentist told him they all had to be removed. He couldn't get dentures due to budget and needed to wait for bone shards to fall out of his gums, etc. Proceeded to spit all over our food while talking, which, granted, I knew he couldn't help, but if he can hide something this big from someone, what else could he be hiding? Plus, I couldn't stomach the thought of making out with someone with no teeth. He just gummed on french fries all night. After a movie date night with a guy I met on Tinder, we came back to my place. We'll call him Dude. I told him we could hang for a bit, but I had work in the morning so would need to go to sleep soon. Dude said that was fine, but he was hungry and was going to order some food. Okay, sure. Dude orders two large subs from Potbelly and a milkshake and downs it. No judgement. He's 6'4 and 210 pounds, younger and still growing, by all means. I didn't think anything of it until later. We ended up messing around a bit and fall asleep in bed. I wake up to my front door, opening and closing several times over a five minute period. My dogs are going nuts and it's 1am. What the heck is this guy doing? I open the door to my room that opens up to the rest of my apartment, and my bathroom is to the left where the light is on and the door is wide open. I walk around the corner to make eye contact with Dude, and he's in a squatting position over my toilet, with a stick poking out of murky brown water that is millimetres from overflowing onto my bathroom floor. Horrified, he yells, Stop looking at me! Go back to bed, I have it under control. I'm still waking up and trying to understand what I'm seeing and what's going on. And I just start nervous laughing. I don't know what else to do. He yells, why don't you have a plunger? And I said, I don't know, I never needed one until now. He tells me to go back to bed 
he has it under control. I'm so disturbed, tired, can't process what's happening, and have work in the morning, so I go back to bed. I remember hearing him peek in my room a bit later, and heard, I fixed it, and then heard him leave, and my door closed behind him. The next morning, I hesitantly approach my toilet to find the water is down, but there's something poking out of the bottom of the toilet, like he didn't get all of it. Upon further inspection, what I was seeing was the tip of a stick, some gloves, towels and barbecue tongs. Later I pulled out approximately three feet of stick from my toilet that had broken off, followed by several other stick fragments. Dude had broken several sticks. I heard my door open and close so much because he was going outside to look for a stick. One would break and he'd go get another. Dude had left drippy poop water stains all over my bathroom floor. He also left my apartment so fast that he left his underwear and undershirt and socks. After work that day, I went straight to the store and bought a plunger. Lesson learned. I matched with a girl using the highly successful and scientifically proven dating app we find ourselves currently on, Tinder. We'll call this match Jen. Jen seemed nice, laughed at my crappy humour, talked good and proper, and asked when we might be meeting up. I suggested a place, and she told me when to be there. I went into this with zero expectations. It was Tinder after all but my choice of wine bar had been met with overwhelming approval, so I thought maybe something positive might come out of it. Then, I saw Jen, and I wanted something to come out of it. She looked substantially better in person than on the app. A reverse catfish, if you will. She had come straight from work, and still carried the aura of being focused and unstoppable. Something one would expect from an early 20s NYC girl who was still taking on the world and not yet driven down by defeat or cynicism. Except Jen was 28 and might be interested in me, so it was even better. When she looked over at me, a metamorphosis occurred. Her professional demeanor transformed from a defense attorney honing in on a lead witness's error-filled testimony to a child who just received the Christmas puppy they wanted after all other presents had been exhausted. I actually had butterflies in my stomach. Jen and I do a friendly hug and the first thing I notice is her perfume. I don't know what it was, but she smelled amazing. I get an image in my head courtesy of Hollywood us laying in bed post-sex like carefree actors and perfect hair, great lighting and a lack of towels required to clean up certain bodily fluids. We sit as the server lays down the dinner menus. She says she'll be right back and with a glance at my watch, the clock officially begins 8.12pm. I only know because she had said 8 and I have an irrational fear of being stood up. I needed to verify, I was overanalyzing that thought. I'm already a quarter into my drink, having arrived at eight and needed something to calm myself. Jen peruses the wine list while we engage in the initial pleasantries, like how nice she looks, adventures on the MTA to get there, and other small talk. I browse the dinner menu, trying to figure out what I can stomach against my newly arisen, alcohol-resistant jitters. I spot my food of choice, a duck confit salad, and close the menu as Jen flags down our server and orders a Riesling. So far, so good. After her order, she leans into the table, showing some eagerness to talk. Jen has a hell of a smile and brightens up almost on cue as I ask about what she does. The small talk turns to worthwhile discussion as her drink gets dropped off. She tells the server she's ready to order, 
Apparently, she's already been here and knows what she wants without having to look at the menu. Jen orders a braised pork dish, hands the menu to the server and sips her wine. The server looks at me and I order my duck confit salad. Jen noticeably has a moment where I think the wine went down the wrong pipe. She recovers fast and instead of coughing, she's just staring at me with this look of disdain. At this point, I'll mention that my employment consists of public relations for an organization that is not well liked. A day I perform well at work is a day where I am able to be in a very stressful, often hostile environment while staying together, thinking on my feet and getting the message out. It happens frequently and I do my job rather well. I say this not to talk myself up, but to prove just how disastrous the following was. A uh, salad? I want to say she bellowed it, but really, I was just so caught off guard, it came off as loud as a bullhorn. The server, and myself, not sure what to make of this, look at her with confusion on our faces. His quickly disappears into the menu he's now holding. I reply, it's got duck in it. Years of experience as an orator are on full display in this crowning moment as my rhetoric resonates across the table. A salad. Do you know how that will make me look as I'm shoveling braised pork into my mouth? The server realizes that the table near the bar, which didn't flag him down, suddenly needs his attention, and he'll be right back to see if we need to change our order. Again, I do PR. This is where I work best, on the defensive. I look her dead in the face and say, is this a body image thing or something? She loses it. I can't even comprehend what she's saying because I'm so mortified at the ignorance I just blurted out. The barrage of FUs and assholes and other obscenities hit their mark, killing my stomach butterflies where they flutter. I start picking up that I'm making her look like a pig, which consequently is what I just ordered. I am literally speechless. She and everyone else in this place are just staring at me, or maybe us, I don't know. I finally get the urge to speak up and apologize profusely for making her feel that way. I tell her I'll order something else, we can start over, and this is just a silly little, did you just say silly? That was it, I was done, preparing for wine to be thrown in my face. Instead, she just stands up, grabs her bag, gives me the finger, and yells out another obscenity. The restaurant is dead silent as we all watch her leave. She kicks a chair as she was leaving and yells again as I assume she broke her toe. More silence, except for one guy just trying to silence his laughter a few tables away. As his companion is saying, oh my god stop, that's not funny, I would die. I agreed at the time, but now I think it's one of the funniest things that's ever happened to me. I just sat there for a moment and noticed the server standing at my table, looking down at me. I glance at my watch, 8.29pm. I offer a pleasant smile and order the duck confit salad. But please, not the braised pork. I was likely dining alone that night. So, I had my salad and it was amazing. Another glass of my red, her Riesling, and a pretty decent dinner. The server tried to comp two of the glasses of wine, but I just tipped him out the comps because he did nothing wrong. I don't know if it was all serious or she was just messing around with me. She unmatched me some time after she left, and that was that. I met this guy online, texted a lot, and thought, why not go out on a date? 
Well, there are a lot of things he failed to mention, such as his extreme Tourette's. Every sentence had a swear word thrown in randomly, and he would interrupt me constantly, which I brushed aside because I had met people with the syndrome before. His height was almost a foot less than his profile said. It said he was over six feet, but I'm 5'7 and I towered over him. And, of course forgot to mention, the six other girls he was in a relationship with. I was uneasy initially, because of how much he'd failed to mention, but it got worse. He took me to a massive antique store, we both love old stuff, which was basically the creepiest warehouse I've been in. It was dimly lit, with all sorts of creepy dolls lining the walls, not my kind of antique store. So, we're walking through the store, with him randomly shouting swear words, and I just want to go home. He kept grabbing my shoulder, cupping my shoulder and squeezing hard, then would run his hands down my back, grabbing my ass. I tell him that I'm not comfortable with it, and he grabs my hand and pulls me into the bathroom at the end of the shop, throws me against the wall so I end up on my hands and knees. I'm in shock now. He locks the door, lowers his pants, and thrusts his junk in my face. When I didn't follow his request, he grabbed my jaw and tried to open my mouth. A finger slips in and I take the opportunity to bite it. This freaked him out, screaming, what the hell's wrong with you? I just wanted a blowy. And I stand up, slap him in the face, and get out as soon as possible. I'm crying while running out of the shop, and the shopkeeper stops me and asks what's wrong. I explain what just happened, and he looked over to see my date chasing after me. He was arrested on sight, and haven't heard from him since. Thankfully, I'm now with a wonderful man, so it all worked out in the end. I started dating this girl for a few weeks, very attractive, curly-haired blonde. She had just started getting into bodybuilding, and she was definitely my type. We were in college, I was a junior at the time, and she was a senior. Seems like the perfect catch. We had started to go out to bars together, and I remember her talking about how she'd never thrown up from drinking. Well, we both got basically blackout drunk out at the bars one time, and we went back to my place, and we passed the hell out in my room. I remember vaguely waking up to the sound of liquid plopping. She wasn't next to me in bed anymore. She was hunched over a few feet away from the bed. I still had blurred vision, was in a drunken stupor, and was extremely groggy, so I figured she must have been puking in the trash bin. The next morning, we were both extremely hungover. I asked her if she puked last night, and oddly, she replied no. She must not remember, I thought. I had a meeting with my parents that day for church, as it was Easter. So we hung out, and she left. I quickly got ready to meet with my parents, and I looked in the trash bin for the damage, but there was nothing in there. I looked around my room for any remnants of puke, but I couldn't find anything. Well, that's weird, I thought. She was definitely in my room unloading something, but I couldn't find anything. Over the course of the next week, a really weird smell would keep occasionally popping up in my room. I had absolutely no idea what the hell it was. And it smelled really bad, but then it would go away and it wouldn't come back for another few hours. I would search and search, but I couldn't find anything. Then, about a week after we went to the bars, I found it. I found them. She had left me a couple of number twos and did a number one in a clothes drawer of mine. It was a clothes drawer that I hardly used, but oh yeah, it was there. The clothes inside were ruined and stained, 
and I had to wash out the inside of the drawer with disinfectant and a hose. She was a really nice girl with a good sense of humour. I figured that we could just laugh it off. I texted her about it, saying, Hey, I think you went in my clothes drawer that night. She was like, What the hell? You're joking. I said, No, you definitely did. I never heard back from her. Two years ago, my sophomore year of college, I matched with this cute outdoorsy guy that had a lot of the same interests as me. He insisted I go to his place, which should have been red flag number one. Stupidly, I go over there to be greeted by a towering and unkempt guy in ratty pyjama pants and a stained tank top. It was the same guy from the pictures, but the pictures were definitely from five or ten years ago. His apartment was a sticky mess and reeked of B.O. I sat on the far opposite side of the couch as him, texting my friends trying to figure out how to leave. He puts on some cold case documentary and is taking shot after shot of tequila, trying to get me to do the same. He edges closer and closer to me on the couch and eventually puts his arm around me. He is the kicker. The whole time on the couch, he was talking to me about Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome non-stop. About what he would do in either side of that situation. Not the guy in the pictures, sketchy environment, murder documentary, Stockholm Syndrome. I stayed there no more than 15 minutes. He messaged me and apologised if he freaked me out, but I blocked him. Bad vibe city. I actually met my fiancé shortly thereafter, on Tinder believe it or not. I guess you have to meet some creepers before you meet the one. I matched with this super cute girl on Tinder. We messaged back and forth for a few days. Didn't see any red flags, we just liked the same things and seemed like we clicked very well. So we decided to meet up at a restaurant for our first date. She told me to walk in and look for a woman in a red dress. To give you context, I don't really do this very often and I was pretty nervous once I pulled up. I double checked everything. Hair, check. Breath, check. Nothing in my teeth, check. Condoms, check. So I get down and walk into the restaurant. And I started looking for her. The hostess offered to seat me somewhere, but I declined and said, with a smirk, my date is waiting for me, it's okay. So I continued and walked in looking for her. I couldn't seem to find her, but as soon as I turned the corner, I saw a table full of my boys laughing their asses off and recording my reaction to the moment that I realised I had been catfished and been flirting with the boys for the past week. I'm traumatized now. I've been friends with these guys for a long time. They bought me a beer and we laughed about it. We met at Starbucks. She told me she was vegan and that she was cool that I'm not. I order a coffee with cream in it and she screams at the top of her lungs, in the crowded Starbucks, that I'm a cow murderer. I just paid for my stuff and left. Another time, I met a girl from Tinder, and we saw each other a few times. She had an ex that she still talked to, but hasn't had any feelings for in a few years. So I go to her apartment, and this place is like a shrine to him pictures of him on every wall and it wasn't just from when they were together and she never took them down she just moved to this place like a month prior so she recently decorated her apartment with his face really creeped me out and felt like i was going to be some sort of sacrifice to get him back
I worked as a bartender for a while and heard a lot of horror stories from people. This one girl who was a regular came in and told me about an awful Tinder date she had. Not sure of the specifics, but it wasn't bad enough for her to not bring him home afterward. He leaves the next morning. She brushes it off as a one night stand and a few days later, her debit card gets declined. Odd since she's a bartender herself at a fairly busy place in our city and she's good about saving and usually flush with cash. She goes to check her debit card. It turns out there were a bunch of charges at Best Buy, Grubhub and a bunch of other stuff. Curious, she checks her credit card too. There she found a bunch of charges for streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, Sling, everything. She goes to confront the guy and finds out that he's deleted his profile. But she remembers a friend they had in common on Facebook. She reaches out to the mutual friend to try and track him down. And it turns out he did the exact same thing to that mutual friend. Not sure of what the outcome was, but she was out for blood. After a mediocre hookup turned into a serious case of identity theft. I met a girl, let's call her Sonia. We get dinner at a restaurant near her house and then drink and hang out at her place after. During the night, Sonia somewhat casually mentions that she has a guy that stalks her and I'm just not sure what to make of this and pretty much don't give it another thought. After dinner, we go to Sonia's house. We drink and she plays the guitar and sings a song and we stay up late. I end up drinking too much to drive home so I stay on her couch and we decide to get breakfast in the morning before I go to work. Around 6am, we get ready to leave for breakfast and she mentions her stalker texted her saying he'd be there in 5 minutes so it's good we're leaving now. This all seems pretty odd and unbelievable to me. I've never heard of a stalker announcing themselves and especially doing so, so early. But whatever, let's go eat. I'm tired and hungover anyhow. Sonia's house is near campus and my car is parallel parked on one of the many one-way streets. As I'm getting ready to pull my car out, this minivan pulls up next to me, trapping me in. He rolls down his window and yells, but I said I loved you. And I'm just like, holy crap. So then after a few seconds, I don't remember any more of their dialogue. He pulls forward and heads down the street. Sonia is in my car and just apologizing saying she used to date him and they weren't that serious and just super embarrassed. So I try to give her the benefit of the doubt. He eventually turns left and I need to go the same way he went, but I decide I'm getting out of here and I turn right instead. As I do so, I look in my rear view mirror and this guy does a U-turn and is now following me. I can't believe this is actually happening. So then I decide to pull into a grocery parking lot and drive through it. For some reason, I feel this will deter him from following me and I want to confirm he can't possibly follow me. It doesn't work. He follows my exact route. I pull out of the grocery parking lot and eventually approach a red light. He pulls up next to my passenger side, yelling at her to roll her window down and she refuses to. I decide I'll do a super aggressive illegal U-turn at this red light to get away. He does the same maneuver and continues to follow me. He then starts to rev his engine and accelerate as if he's going to run into my car and slams on his brakes right before doing so. I wouldn't have guessed it out of context, but in this situation, this is a pretty intimidating move. He does this move repeatedly as we speed through the side streets approaching downtown Columbus. At this point, I ask Sonia if he's dangerous or could have a weapon. Sonia isn't sure. Sonia calls the police to tell them of our situation. 
They tell us to continue driving downtown as the police station is pretty close to us. I thought I could evade him or get cars in between us, but it was impossible with such little traffic during the early morning. We continue to the police station and as we pull in, he drives past us. We wait a few minutes and we decide to then continue on to breakfast. Sonia pays for breakfast, but I can't eat much of anything as my heart is still racing. After breakfast, she still needs a ride home. I really dreaded the idea of going near her house again, but at this point, the police were also on their way to her house. I reluctantly drop her off and head to work, now fully awake. It didn't work out between me and Sonia. I was in the Navy and standing watch on the pier one night. The chief of the guard rolls up with his van and a bunch of guys in the back, just making the rounds and checking on things. There's this super cute guy in the van, and we get to chatting a bit, and he asks me if I want to go see a movie with him and his friends the following weekend. He tells me to invite some of my friends, and I'm excited and agree, and we swap numbers. Over the course of the week, we set up the details. He picks the movie, location and time, and I let him know that I'm bringing one friend. He tells me he's bringing a couple, it's all good. The day of the date, me and my friend, she's also in the Navy and works on the same ship with me, show up at the location a few minutes early. I start texting the guy to let him know that we're here he texts me back saying all his friends bailed and it's just him. Okay, gonna be kind of awkward with my friend as a third wheel, but whatever, I'm chill. And so's my friend, so I'm thinking we'll still have a good time. We meet him at the front of the theater and we start looking at the times. The movie he wanted to see didn't start for another two hours. He got the times mixed up so we decided to walk around the mall to kill time. This is where it gets creepy. I could tell as we started talking that the chemistry was just not there. The conversation was forced and overall it was uncomfortable. He began to ask me very specific questions about my life. Things like, does the town of Silverton have any significance to you? You guys, this was the town my parents brought me home to from the hospital. I have always claimed a different town as my hometown because I lived in Silverton all of six months before moving to my hometown. I come to find out, this guy ran a background check on me and collected a weird amount of information prior to our date. He then proceeded to tell me how he ran a background check. Needless to say, my friend and I looked at each other and made an excuse to get the hell out of the situation. Creep factor was intense. This was my first ever online date. I signed up for Plenty of Fish on a Sunday morning at like 6am back in 2012. Right away I got like 7 messages. One of them was a 31 year old lawyer no kids, never married, and she was like, I love your profile, you seem really fun and nice, would you be interested in going to church with me this morning? I said, church sounds like a horrible date, but you do the church thing, and I'll meet for brunch and a walk after. She said, perfect, pick me up at noon, and gives me her address. Well, that was easy, I guess, or so I thought. I go to pick her up, and the address is a sober care treatment center. I'm thinking, since she's a lawyer, she might have had a client there or something. I messaged her that I was outside, and she comes out looking unrecognizable from her profile. High heels and skirt so short you could see her panties from the front. As she gets closer, I can see hickeys all on her neck. She hops in my car. I was in shock, but still should have drove off. And is immediately like, can I pleasure you? Hell no, I don't even know you. 
We're sitting there and it's clear to me she's a fake profile and is really an escort. She's begging me for $40, showing me her boobs. I almost had to call the cops to get her out of my car. She even pulls out a Ziploc bag of used panties from her purse, trying to sell me them. I met a woman who I really hit it off with. No affection or sex for maybe six months of just hanging out several times a week as just friends. One night, we got hammered and I spent the night. After that, we still hung out just as frequently, spent the night every time, and we pretty much acted as a couple, going out with friends, wedding dates, etc, etc. I had things that lived at her place. After maybe six months of this, I find out that on the other two or three nights each week we weren't together, she was hooking up with randos on Tinder. Apparently, even in your 40s, it's necessary to have that so, like, are you officially my girlfriend? Conversation that you had to have in sixth grade. I met this guy in high school through a Christian youth group that went around doing service projects. We met helping out the homeless downtown in our city, giving them food, socks, etc. I thought he was super nice and cute and I hadn't had a boyfriend yet, was pretty insecure as well, so it was nice that he was interested in me. Fast forward a week, and my newly licensed self decided I could pick him up one night, and we'd go for dinner at a fast food place by his house. My mum wouldn't have approved, because it seemed sketchy, as she didn't know the guy, and I never told her about him, so I lied and said I needed to go to the store. I picked him up, and we were driving along when things got very uncomfortable. At a red light, he leaned over and put his hand between my thighs and started rubbing. I was petrified, and had never had anyone touch me there, and I didn't know what the hell to do. I pushed his hand away and laughed because how does someone react to that? He was in my car, and I couldn't really get away. I got scared and told him I didn't want to go to dinner anymore because I wasn't feeling very well. He tried putting his hand in my pants. This time, I shoved him off and said it was dangerous because I was driving. Looking back, I should have kicked him out of my car and let him find his own way home, but instead, I dropped him off. He tried to kiss me and I was like, hell no and I drove home and told my mum I got lost driving around. I told my sister around two months later because she had a mutual friend with the guy and she gave him hell for it and told him to never speak to me again and he lost some friends over it. This is part of the reason why six years later I don't like being alone with men in cars and also why I don't use Uber etc. Maybe I'm being dramatic but it left an impact on me that I haven't shaken yet. We went to dinner in a movie. Dinner at Carabas. I ordered seafood pasta and everything's fine. We go to the movie and we're chilling. Five minutes before the movie ends, I get this feeling in my tummy. I need to use the bathroom, stat. I hold off until the end of the movie, and then run to the restroom. I go up to the mirror, look at my reflection, and then projectile vomit pasta chunks into the mirror and into the sink. I gasp and run into a stall. A mum and daughter walk in, and the mum says, oh my god, and then she leaves. I'm panicking and try to clean up as much as I can. Then I leave the stall, and my date is there. He asks me if I want to go back to his apartment to hang out. Obviously I say yes. I ask for a stick of gum and I feel like the rest of the night will be fine. The worst is done. But I was wrong. 
We get back to his apartment, and he warns me it may be a little messy. That's fine, not a problem. We open the door, and we both gasp. His dog broke three potted plants, and there's literally dirt everywhere. It's filthy. I help him clean up, and then we go to cuddle and watch TV. A few episodes of The Office go by, and that feeling in my tummy comes back. I'm not ready. I excuse myself to the restroom and barely make it to the toilet. I vomit again, my tummy calms down, and I clean myself up again. I go back out to snuggle, and then, when we go to sleep, he hasn't said anything about me going to the bathroom so much, so everything's fine. Around maybe 5 or 6 a.m., we wake up to the sound of retching. His dog is puking on the carpet. The only thing that runs through my mind is, you too, bud? My date cleans it up and we go back to bed. Surely the worst is over. The morning comes and we're getting a little frisky. He's behind and I'm kind of bouncing off him. And then he screams. We stop and I'm like, you okay? And he's like, no, I think I broke my junk. We've got to go to the ER. I'm freaking out. I tell him it's okay, and he promises me he needs to go to the hospital. I ask if he wants me to stay with him in the ER, and he says no and takes me home. I start crying because I know I screwed everything up. Turns out, he fractured his manhood. It was purple and couldn't touch it for a whole month. He was kind enough to let me know. Then he asked if he could see me again. We've been dating for four years now, so I guess it worked out okay. I started talking to this guy for a while. We really hit it off. After a couple of weeks, he admits that the pictures he used in his profile were actually of his brother. He said he had some self-esteem issues because he had a fairly new, fairly large scar on his face from a car accident. It really wasn't bad at all. Think chips from SOA. He sent me pictures of him for real, including pictures of him with his brother to prove he was being honest. His brother was good looking, but I thought he was actually cute too, even with the scar. He apologized for being dishonest and said he hoped I'd still give him a chance, but he understood if it was a little much. I had empathy for him, and we really clicked, and I appreciated how he handled the situation, so I said I'd still meet him. We meet up, and he's immediately acting totally differently than how he was in texts and whatnot. Being very standoffish, difficult to maintain a good conversation with, just acting like he was annoyed. I finally ask him what's wrong. He tries to tell me I don't look like my pictures and that I'm heavier than I was in my pictures and hadn't been honest. I was completely taken aback, mostly because I had not, in fact, gained any weight. I couldn't think of anything good to say. I just said I didn't think I'd gained any weight and that that was a very superficial and hypocritical thing to say given what had happened with his pictures. He said yeah, but then I came clean about it before the date. I started to get angry and repeated that I was the same weight as my pictures. He then started to go detail by detail about what was different. Your face is rounder. I can't see your collarbones like that one picture. Your stomach looks bigger, on the sides, etc, etc. In the middle of it, I grabbed my stuff and told him it wasn't the scar that made him ugly. It was just the person he was. He started screaming at me and calling me names as I walked out. I left him with the bill. The food hadn't even come out yet. Honestly, it messed me up for a while. I've had body dysmorphia most of my life. And that sucked. I went to meet a girl on our first date. 
When we set up the date, she told me that she didn't have a car, so she would have to ride with me. That's a major red flag for me now, unless it's someone who has a good reason for not having one. Nevertheless, being new to the whole dating game, I agreed to pick her up and give her a ride. When I showed up, I find out she's 40 pounds heavier than any of her pictures showed. She was still cute, but I felt like I was really being lied to. But I let it fly again, since I had really enjoyed getting to know her. We went to dinner at a local restaurant that I knew she liked, and we each had a couple of drinks. We talked for a while and got to know one another, and then I paid for dinner, and afterwards, we were talking and wanted to go somewhere else. She suggested a local bar that she liked to go to, so we headed over there. We had a drink at the bar and have a good conversation going up. She gets up to go to the restroom, and while she's gone, an older gentleman who had been sitting behind us gets up and comes over and taps me on the shoulder. He proceeds to warn me that the girl I'm with has been with, quote, every guy in this place, and that I might want to run away as fast as I can from her. I presume he was including himself in with them, since he didn't exclude himself. By this time, I've had enough with the red flags, and I'm about done with this date. The old man goes and sits down, and she comes back from the bathroom. I tell her I'm about ready to go, and she asks if we can have one more drink. I tell her sure, but after that, I have to go wash my hair, or some such nonsense because I can't wait to get out of there. While we're sipping on our last drink, a guy that was sitting in the corner gets up and waves to her. She tells me that she's going to go say hi to one of her friends that she knows. I assume that this is one of the guys that the old man was telling me about. So now I'm really done. I finish up my drink and close out the tab and walk over to her when she's having an animated conversation with the X-Bar hookup and tell her I'm ready to take off if she wants a ride home. She turns around and slaps me in the face and tells me to wait. Now, my blood is boiling and I'm pissed. But once again, being ignorant and stupid and all, I told her I was leaving. If she wanted a ride home, she better get in the vehicle. Now, you would think this would be the end of the story. I would take her home, the night would be over, that would be that. If only. I take her home in my vehicle because I'm a decent guy, and I wouldn't want to strand anyone when they have been drinking. When we get to her place, she starts trying to undo my belt because she wants to get freaky. I'm already so pissed at this chick because all I want from her is for her to get the hell out and leave me alone. She will not take no for an answer. She makes a grab for my car keys, and when I grab them before her, she tells me to give them to her so she can throw them in the cornfield so I can't leave. At this point, I have no words. I'm dealing with a level of crazy that I couldn't comprehend. I have no idea how I got her out of my vehicle. My friend went on a date with a guy who didn't look much like his photos, but she's a nice girl so she decided to stick it out and give him a chance. Towards the end of dinner, she was telling a story, and he was maintaining intense eye contact. But she noticed from her peripheral that his hand was closely creeping across the table towards her dirty used napkin and he then proceeded to put it in his pocket and excused himself from the table. Apparently, he was in the bathroom for a good 10 to 15 minutes, doing God knows what with that napkin. I chatted to this girl who had beautiful long blonde hair. Her bio said she self-identified as a sexy, bold magician. Hey, it was 2019, 
and you can do and be whatever you want. But I didn't think anything of it, because she had pictures with hair. So I agree and go on a date. She shows up with the same hair from the pictures, so we order food and we're chatting. I compliment her hair. And she then says I don't like talking about it, I self-identify as bold. Then she took her wig off, in the middle of the restaurant. So now I'm sitting there with a bold lady and everyone's looking at us, like, what's he gonna do? We're still waiting for food and I'm slowly dying on the inside and I have to pretend that I'm not freaked out right now. So then, I said the only thing that came to mind. So, you're into magic? She then started trying to do some mentalism but it was just those math tricks that people use to fake read your mind. But imagine adding theatrics to it. Pick an animal that starts with the letter E, jazz hands. So the food came, and I said I was starving to keep eating as fast as I could. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. My first online dating experience ever was with a girl I met on OkCupid about seven years ago. She was 19 and I was 20, so it seemed like a pretty solid deal. We talked for a couple of days over text and she invited me over to watch movies. I decided to agree and drove like 45 minutes to her apartment. When I got there, everything seemed cool and she took me back to her room after I said hi to her roommate. Then, when she opened the door, the entire room was covered in Justin Bieber, One Direction, and tons of other awful boy bands memorabilia. Like, there wasn't a thing in the room that didn't have some kind of poster, figurine, or sticker of the stuff. I decided to just have a laugh about it, and we started watching The Notebook of all things. Things went good for about half an hour, and she was hinting that she was in the mood and I figured a hookup would be fun. Then I hear a huge slam from the living room and her roommate starts beating on the door like there's no tomorrow, angrily screaming for her to open up. She got off of the bed and did so only to have her roommate start screaming at her about stealing her hot wings from the fridge, only to have her say that they were old anyway and she figured she didn't want them. I tried to calm them down, but her roommate told me to get lost and mind my own business. So then she told her to calm the hell down and quit being a bitch. Then her roommate started pushing her and she started pushing back until it erupted in a full on punching, slapping, hair pulling, screeching grapple fest. At that point, I decided to grab my phone and stuff and say I was gonna go. They kind of stopped for a second and the girl I came to see said, I should stay, and my exact words were, nah, screw that. As I let myself out, I heard the yelling start up again, and then some banging around from what I assume was the fighting starting up again. I got in my car and headed home and went to sleep. Then I got a text from her the next day, apologizing and saying that that's just how they are. I didn't respond at all deleted OkCupid, okay and didn't use any dating apps for like a year. I told my friends a couple of days later after it happened, and thanks to how hard they laughed at what had happened, it just became a funny memory pretty quick. Hot wings are a hell of a drug, y'all. I can't drive because I have terrible peripheral vision and sometimes it can make bad dates awkward because I ask them to take me home. This one took the cake. I swear all of this really happened. We were supposed to get dinner and a movie. He picked me up, seemed nervous and wouldn't stop quickly talking when we were on the way. I just figured it was first date nerves. We went by the dinner place, about to get out of the car when he says he actually thinks the movie is going to start before we finish dinner. They were a little busy, but I thought it was a bit strange. 
We skip dinner and we go to the movie theater, stood in line for him to get a ticket. I had already gotten mine online, so I didn't bring anything inside with me but my phone to show my QR code. We get up to pay and he does the very obvious, oh no, I forgot my wallet at home, I'm so embarrassed. Except he says it in a manner that suggested he wanted me to offer to pay. I tell him I didn't bring my card inside. He apologizes to the teller and calls me his forgetful girlfriend. Super awkward. So we leave the theater. He immediately suggests that instead of going back in to pay, that we go by his place real quick to grab his wallet. Call first redemption. I agree with him and we have enough time to make it back for the film. 10 minutes pass and we pull up to his place. He asks me if I want to come inside and I say sure. So we get inside. I realize he still lives with his parents. We're both almost 30. He introduces me to them, super awkward. He immediately suggests that since we're having such a nice time that we just stay there and watch a movie. At this point, I'm no longer interested and screaming inside. I text a friend about the possibility of getting picked up, actively awaiting a reply. His parents offer me spaghetti, awkward, and I politely decline, but he doesn't. Eager to get the hell out of the kitchen, I follow him to his room where he's picking a movie. I sit down on the couch in his room and incessantly check my phone for SOS replies. Nothing yet. He gets sidetracked and I'm barely listening and starts playing some of his, quote, original music that's literally just a pre-recorded instrumental of Fallout Boy songs with his crappy alternate lyrics badly recorded over it. I'm so cringe. I almost feel bad for the guy until he apologizes for all the uppers he's on and how he's speeding and probably acting weird. I finally get a reply, 25 minutes and I am out of there. I let him know that I may have to leave soon, so he turns on YouTube and sits down next to me on the couch. He slowly creeps closer, puts his arm around my shoulder and uses the back of his hand to brush against my side boob. I stand up. What are you doing? You said you have to leave soon. I thought maybe we could fool around before I took you home. Sorry, but no, you're a nice guy and all, but I'm not interested. I'm waiting on a friend to come and pick me up right now. I don't think we'll be going out again. He immediately becomes a blubbering mess and apologizes profusely. Claims there must be something wrong with him. He's desperately lonely and it's been years. He doesn't know how to talk to people. He's going to kill himself if he can't get attention. All of the horrible excuses you don't care to listen to. I don't even reply. I just gather my purse and make my way towards the door. He says, you could have at least let me give you a ride home. It's not like I'm going to hurt you. Nope, I'm out. I start leaving his house and say nothing to his parents as I leave the way I came and wait by the driveway for my friend. I'm out there maybe five minutes before he comes outside, crying, telling me I've embarrassed him and I should feel terrible for embarrassing his family who made me a perfectly nice meal. I don't answer, he keeps yelling, eventually going back inside. Another couple of minutes pass and he comes back outside, apologizes profusely. I tell him to leave me alone and he asks for a goodnight kiss. I tell him to get lost. My roommate slash friend picks me up. We have a good laugh and we get a little closer from it. About five days pass, I think it's all over. I was wrong. For context, while I was talking to this person on Tinder before we met for a date, I talked a lot about food because I'm a professional chef. I mentioned once in a chat weeks ago that I needed to stop responding for a day because I have to go out to get groceries. That usually takes me a while because I go to three to five stores 
to get the best produce, prices and specialty ingredients. So I'm at home, it's summer and I'm messing around on Reddit and listening to Taylor Swift. I hear the back door to the house open and I presume it's my roommate who went shopping a few hours ago. I hear the rustle of bags in my kitchen and someone putting away things in the pantry and the fridge. After about 10 minutes, I go in to refill a beverage and I see it's the same guy from that terrible date. I hit the SOS alert button on my phone, which sends my location, a distress message and an image from both front and rear cameras on my phone and a one minute audio recording to a list of people I choose. I asked him what the hell he was doing at my house and why he thought he could just come in unannounced. Oh, you needed groceries. I thought it would be nice to bring you some. I invited a couple of friends over. And I thought we could have a double date and cook them a nice meal. Are you kidding me? I see red. I start screaming and shoving him to get him out of my house. At first, he seems genuinely confused, then angry. I get him out of the house, lock the doors and call my roommate. Now, he's sitting in his car in the driveway, punching himself in the face. I start yelling from the window that I've called the cops, which I hadn't, so that he'd leave. He does, after about 20 minutes. After that, I installed cameras in my house. That guy ended up getting arrested a couple of weeks later for assault. Unsure if it was sexual or not. My roommate and I bonded through this experience, began dating about six months after that, and have been together for four years now. I kept the groceries. I have a few stories from guys I met on Match back when I was single and ready to mingle. The first one seemed quite nice, but was a bit controlling on the first date, deciding where we went without asking my opinion etc. But I figured some girls liked that level of dominance, so maybe he just read me wrong. I agreed to go on a second date and he wouldn't tell me where we were going, other than London. I told him I needed to know, just so I knew what to wear. But really it was for personal safety reasons. He told me to wear a dress, which I never do. When I told him I wasn't wearing a dress, he got stroppy with me. When I pushed and said I needed to know exactly where I was going with someone I'd just met, he told me I was being difficult and was totally out of order. He lost his temper and got quite abusive calling me a stuck-up bitch, so I blocked him. The second one was just plain rude. He made several weird remarks throughout the evening. I made a joke about having a fat ass. I was totally honest in my profile about being a UK size 14 to 16. And he said, in a really deadpan way, yes, I noticed. He chewed gum throughout the date, and when we ate, he stuck it to the side of his plate and left it for the waitress to clear. Then we bumped into a very merry colleague of mine, who I introduced, who drunkenly declared me as the best boss ever. I'm really not. And the guy literally shrugged and turned his back on him. Rude. I ended the date early, and as I turned to leave, he tried to aggressively shoulder bump me and missed. I blocked him immediately and reported him to match. Here's another one. I went on a date with a guy who brought his digital camera with him to the pub. He asked if I'd like to see his photos and for 45 minutes he sat there going this is my car, this is my mum, this is a tree in my mum's garden, this is my kitchen, this is my work. At one point I looked over his shoulder and the barman was staring at me and mouthed, what the F? Then I felt awkward ending the date because he had driven quite a long way. So I ended up going to the cinema with him. He wanted to see a rom-com. I was adamant that 300 was a better choice. We saw 300. 
He tried to kiss me when he dropped me home, and I turned my head away quickly, which caused my ponytail to flick him in the eye. This girl and I started talking, and the conversation was fluent and fun. From her pics, she looked seriously cute. She was at the uni studying psychology, close to my house, so we made a plan to hang out the second day and watch a movie at my house together. Fast forward, and she gets dropped off by her friend, and I had to go and find her because she couldn't find my house. I go to the car, and I see a girl smiling, and her friend with what looks like terror on her face, like pure horror. I'm 19, and a run-of-the-mill athletic dude. I'm fairly tall and not bad looking, and I'm hygienic, so having someone look at me like that really confused me. The girl gets out of the car, and it's the same chick as the photos, except she shaved her head completely. We're walking to my place, and she was really quiet, but she would say some random word every five seconds. She mostly said beef, taco, socks, and meow, like sometimes halfway through a conversation. Okay, I thought, maybe this chick is just quirky. I ask her about her hair, and she says she just felt like cutting it. No medical reason, no donating. Okay, cool. I ask about what she likes to do, and she's like, I'm seriously weird, meow. I like when people call me squiggly. All my friends call me squiggly, taco. Uh, who am I bringing into my house? I still persevered, and we started watching a movie at my house on the couch. We sat five feet away from each other, and she went from energetic talking to pure horror in her eyes. I just kept trying to make small talk while I chose a movie. I asked if she's okay, and she says, I'm going to have a seizure. I'm going to go to the taco hospital. I'm like, oh no, okay, do you want me to drive you? And she's like, no, I'm going to get my friend to pick me up. And she started laughing. I'm like, okay, I'll walk you out, just to be nice. I walk her out, and she says, bye, meow and I bring my dog into the house and bring my phone up to block her number. And she already blocked me. This all happened in the time span of 15 minutes. To this day, I still have no idea what happened really, or whoever that was, but I hope she's alright. I called up two of my girlfriends and asked if they could help me understand what happened, and they found the girl's Instagram with 10 followers and the bio said, all my friends call me squiggly. So I'm away across the country for freshman year of college. I just got out of a two year relationship, so I decide to try out Tinder. The first girl I match with seems great, 21 years old and down to meet up. We meet up on that Friday night and decide to go hiking and smoke some weed on the top of the mountain. She picks me up, super awkward at first. We start driving and I ask her what she had planned for the rest of the weekend, and she mentions that she's going to prom with a friend. I feel like I misheard and question her about prom, and she mentions that she's actually a senior in high school. I freaked out because her page said 21, but I let it slide, because I have a blunt rolled, and I want to smoke. We get to the base of the mountain, and everything's normal. We walk up the mountain path, and have solid conversation. Everything seems normal. We get to the top, and I spark the blunt. This is where things get really weird. Post blunt, we start talking, and have some normal conversation, but once in a while, she would stop mid-sentence and whisper to herself, wow, that sounds like a lie, and then would continue on talking like she didn't say that. At this point, I'm really thrown off because she lied about her age and is now talking to herself mid-conversation. I just think I'm too high, so I shake it off and power through. 
From there, she gets up and walks across the rock we're sitting on, about 15 feet, and sits on the edge, staring over at the bottom. I see her doing this, swinging her legs over the edge, so I get up and walk over, asking if she was alright. She freaks out, jumps up, and yells that she's stretching her legs and tells me I should stay where I am. I am beyond freaked out at this point, so I decide it's time to head back down the mountain and go home. I've seen enough, this girl is wacko. We start heading down the mountain in complete silence, until about halfway down the mountain, she asks me if I can hold her car keys. Without thinking twice, I took her keys and we kept walking. After giving me her keys, she turns to me and says, I'm going to start running, and then she takes off. Being confused and obligated to follow because I had the keys, I started running after her. As I'm running after her, keys in hand, she starts screaming rape over again. At first I didn't notice, but it became so clear to me what she was screaming, and I stopped dead in my tracks. Instantly, I thought, I'm being set up. My whole life flashed before my eyes. I'm going to jail for drugging and attempted rape. I slowly finish the walk down the mountain, and I see her standing at the bottom, staring at me. As I get close, I toss her the keys and book it in the other direction. No way I'm going to get caught up in any more of this. I ended up walking 30 minutes home. I deleted Tinder immediately when I got home. This might be the most insane thing to ever happen to me, and possibly the most embarrassing. I'm still processing it, but I'm on two hours of sleep, so it still hasn't hit me yet. I've never, ever met someone who was this level of psychotic until last night. A few days ago, I was trying to slut it up on Grindr and messaged every attractive guy I saw online. There was one who messaged me back, and we got to talking pretty quickly. I picked up on him using certain terms like brilliant and mates, and asked if he was British, which he replied that he was. We're in Los Angeles, by the way. This is like a huge plus for me. I love British accents. I love British slang. And I watch an unhealthy amount of Gordon Ramsay videos on YouTube. So I'm all in right now. We talk a little more, and it turns out we actually have a ton of things in common. We're both huge MMA fans, we don't like stereotypically gay stuff, and we both love hardcore music. We decided to exchange numbers and got out of the app to normal texting. He seems a little eccentric to me, but also genuine and cool. It's been a while since I've truly connected with someone at this level. I asked him what he did for work, and he was a bit vague about it, but I didn't want to press on any personal info he wasn't willing to share. He dropped some hints about his life that piqued my interest, such as supposedly getting into a spat with Katie Hopkins. I was interested here, but decided I would just ask for the details in person. We talked practically all day and night for the next two days, until agreeing to meet at a bar last night. I was extremely nervous about it. I thought, what if he looks different in person? What if he's actually a catfish? He was lagging a bit on getting there, and it only made me more nervous. Then, when he showed up, all those nerves were totally quelled. He was exactly what I expected. Extremely normal, attractive, and cool. We probably spent an hour just talking before even ordering anything. Once we finished up, we decided to go back to my place, drink some more, and play some pool. This is when he started dropping bigger hints about his personal life. He hinted something about his family being barons. I wasn't sure if it was a joke or not. But then he told me a bit more about his family and his background. His dad is among the elite of the UK. He's grown up in the spotlight and had public falling outs with his family over political issues, 
as his dad is closely allied with Boris Johnson. He himself spent years involved in the American music and fashion scenes, touring and doing collaborative work with everyone from Blood on the Dance Floor to Andrew WK. He's not into high fashion, but just signed a design deal with Hot Topic. He's even guest judged on reality fashion shows. This all sounds pretty unbelievable and obviously untrue, but he seemed to have some receipts in the form of pictures that sort of looked like him performing on stage with these people. It's also surprising how much of something you'll believe when spoken in a British accent. I told him it doesn't matter to me who he is. I didn't know about it anyway. I like him just for how I see him. When he drunkenly slipped his last name to me, he asked me not to Google him or look him up until he wants to talk about it. I agreed, which was a lie, and said I'd rather hear about it from him than any tabloid rubbish on the internet. We drank and talked until about 4am, went to my bed and cuddled to some Netflix before passing out for a couple of hours, and he Ubered home while I got ready for work. So, shortly after he left, I decided to figure out what his legal name might be and look him up. I searched the last name to see if it was something big in Britain, and sure enough, it was. A very prominent family, but I couldn't find him, so I searched what I thought was his full name by itself and found him. He's not from a royal family. He was never involved with music to any significant level. He was likely not involved with fashion either, with his 20 Instagram followers. And he's not even British. The accent was fake. All the slang was fake. He told me he moved to this city a month ago and hardly knew anyone. As far as I could tell, he's lived here his whole life. Oh yeah, and he's also 31 not 21 like he claimed to be. To be fair, he looks very good for his age. But amazingly, this is not the worst part. His name was easy for me to find for a reason. I found his mug on a local news article from a few months ago, where he pleaded guilty to posing as a teenager to get with an underage boy as well as romantically manipulating an older woman into giving him thousands of dollars to support his career. He was released from jail exactly one week ago and is now a registered sex offender. It was mentioned that he would often speak in an English accent and it mentioned that he likely had more victims, urging others to come forward to the DA investigator. The case was covered by the DA office since his father is a bit of local royalty as the city's police chief. I called them this morning and left a voicemail, so I'm hoping I can talk to them and let them know that this is still happening. I truly hope no one else gets caught up in this guy's trap. I'm a sophomore in college, engineering student. Pretty shy, not very social. You get the picture. I have a few friends over, and we decide to make dating profiles for entertainment purposes. After that night, I thought to myself, hey, I might actually try to take this seriously. What's the worst that can happen? Profile is made. Fast forward a few months, I finally start talking to this girl. Let's call her Mary, and we plan to meet up. We have a great time and decide to keep seeing each other. Right at the beginning, I had a feeling that things wouldn't really work out for us. I decided not to say anything since I was letting my other head do all the thinking. So things are great for about a month. One morning, we wake up and we were having a conversation about all sorts of things. I ask her when her period is coming and she says soon. So I go home that day and hop onto Xbox and start gaming with some friends. During game time, I get a phone call from Mary. You know that period I was talking about? Not gonna happen. My mind was blown. Holy crap. 
I didn't express those thoughts over the phone. I tried to be tactful and keep my cool. She then drops on me, but it might not be yours. Wow, okay. She's 19 and I'm 20. I don't know what to do. She keeps expressing to me that she's afraid I'm going to run away. I assure her that I won't do that. I grew up without a mother, and it has been one of those personal goals to make sure that my children have two parents. So I decide to try and work out things, despite the fact the baby might not even be mine. Only a month passes by. I was actually doing a lot of research on becoming a dad, and just trying to somehow prepare myself. It was summer, and a few of my friends are back in town from college, and invite me over to a party. I invite Mary over. We get there, and after about half an hour, she tells me my friends are all losers. Wow, okay. Anyway, she ends up leaving. I offer to go, but she says it's okay to hang with my friends. Later in the night, I get a phone call. If you're going to be a father, you can't be out drinking all night. Arguing rages on. She then drops on me. Oh, and just to let you know, I've been cheating on you with a 35-year-old boyfriend. This is where I lost it. I couldn't believe it. I was willing to try and work things out with her, even though the baby might not have been mine, and she's out cheating on me with old dudes. I was infuriated. I had to tell my friends what happened. They, being supportive friends, maybe not the smartest, were quite pissed off and ended up calling her and leaving pretty nasty messages. I know, pretty stupid and childish idea. So, later in the night, still partying, I'm out front smoking a cig with my friend Max, who hosted the party. We see a car pull up, and he says jokingly, ha, looks like Mary showed up to get revenge. But little did we know, it was actually her. She comes flying out of the car, going all Jersey Shore on us, yelling about leaving nasty messages and how I shouldn't be drinking and blah blah. In a certain light, she was right, but let me continue. Drunk arguing continues, and she pulls out her phone and dials 911. Uh, yes, police, I'd like to report underage drinking. Max is quite drunk, and he obviously doesn't like this at all. He goes right up to Mary, takes her phone, and chucks it into his ivy-covered front yard. While it's still connected to the 911 operator, I help her find her phone because that was a dick move by Max. But after that, we go into serious mode. We run into the house and clear most people out and clean up and go upstairs to hide. One of my friends decided to walk home and the police found him and he got an underage. Meanwhile, at Max's house, the cops are knocking on the door and shining lights through the windows, etc. While this is happening, some random kid decides to drink too much and looks like he's gonna die, so I decide to stay up and make sure he doesn't end up choking on his vomit. The cops give up and we go to bed. I stay up till about 6am to make sure this kid doesn't die. The next morning, I wake to a warming sensation on my face. I instantly bolt up to figure out what the hell it is. The kid I stayed up to take care of is pissing on my face. Thanks, bud. Anyway, everyone cleans out in the morning while saying slightly sarcastic screw yous to me. So I'm chilling with Max after everyone leaves and I decide to finally answer Mary's calls that have been blowing up my phone the entire night. She proceeds to tell me that she's going to press charges against Max for assaulting her last night. Are you kidding me? I know the charge would never substantiate, but hell, I don't want my friend to have to go through that whole process. So I try my best to talk her out of it, but no luck. So yeah, still at Max's trying to figure out what the hell to do. Just to put things into perspective, we were all pretty much goody two-shoes throughout high school. Never got into trouble at home or anything. Mary calls back and decides to give us two options. One, she presses charges against Max. Two, she gets her 35-year-old boyfriend to come and kill both of us. 
What the hell? Deep down, we don't believe her, but we also thought, crap, we don't even know who this other guy is, so we wanted to play things safe. I ended up calling the police to file a report that she threatened me. I did that just to have something on record, not because I thought the police would do anything. I found it funny that the police officer told me that I needed to get the hell away from this girl, whether it was my kid or not. Okay, Max's parents come home. They learn nothing, and I go home. Mary calls me again that night. Listen, I won't press charges if you get back together with me. I'm thinking to myself, are you kidding me? I decide to say yes just so this whole thing blows over. I planned on dumping her at the end of the week. Max tells me I'm crazy, but I tell him it's for his own good. Two days pass, and I'm at work. I get another fun phone call. You need to see your doctor. Why? I asked. I have chlamydia. What the hell? This is where I snap. I can't take it anymore. I decide it's over. I tried my best to try and work things out. But screw it, this is too much. Cheating, cops, STDs. Christ, that's not what I want to deal with. I break things off, and she can't handle it. She blows up my phone. Can you at least give me some closure? Fast forward a few months, I get a phone call from Mary. The child turns out to be another race, and is not mine. I feel sorry for the kid, but thank God. And that, kids, is why you be careful who you decide to meet and screw off the internet. <laughs>